it's critical to recognize that if we aren't creating a psychologically safe environment for our people, um, it's going to be very difficult for do, to do the things f that we want to do from a workplace mental health perspective. So mental illness, I mean, there's all kinds of different as as avenues to how that gets developed and created and how folks like with some of these illnesses and diseases find other way into our workplaces. And they aren't necessarily caused by the workplace themselves. So I think, you know, there's that front. And knowing that one in five of us is living with mental health issues, I think is an educational opportunity for the employer to recognize that this is all about us. And it's not an us or them kind of conversation. And so as such, how are we taking care of our staff? But the other thing we want to think about as well, which the employer or the workplace does have much greater control over, is two things. How we organize our work and how we manage our people. And what we would want to do as an educational opportunity is take a look at some of these components. We've narrowed them down to about 13 plus key factors that can talk about it from a point of view of mental harm prevention. And so looking at examples of, okay, our people are on the road a lot, so we're talking about isolation and alone. Those are aspects of systemic issues in terms of how we organized our work. And so as such, are there opportunities for us to be able to look at those and address what they are as risks for us and how do we mitigate or possibly eliminate in some of those opportunities? Much of what we can talk to doesn't even have to bring mental health into the discussion. The principles we're using are talking about productivity, efficiency, well-being, passion, engagement, sustainability. Name any one of those factors that your workplace isn't interested in. The culture sets the tone in the workplace, in the organization. So if, if you have a negative culture, it could undermine the effectiveness of any best program or policy that you have in place. In our experience over the last couple years when we are helping companies, it starts with having a conversation with the CEO. And we're changing a culture in many trucking companies. And what's helping, I guess, would be the fact that we have two and three generations working at different companies. So the older worker, if you will, uh, doesn't have the same um, thought process or feelings with regards to having conversations. You know, you suck it up, you move on, you get that truck, you get the delivery there, you get back and and that's it. You don't show emotions and and the drivers feel that they can't show their emotions and therefore don't. And then they enter in a crisis phase and then we have a, a traumatic situation. Our biggest challenge is educating the CEOs. I will tell you that right now. Mm -hmm.